want to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to tonight's meeting. But just before we open up the meeting, we have a proclamation that we want to present tonight in honor of this coming Saturday, Saturday's Juneteenth uh, day. Uh, whereas the Emancipation Proclamation delivered by President Abraham Lincoln on September 22, 1862, declared that all slaves and states in rebel shall on January 1, 1863, be forever free. Whereas on June 19, 1865, Union soldiers landed in Galveston, Texas, and forced President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation and declared freedom for all sa slaves. Each year thereafter, former Texas slaves and their descendants joined in a celebration of freedom on June 19 and the day became known as Juneteenth. Whereas across our nation, Americans continue to celebrate Juneteenth, a day to reflect on the sufferings of slavery and to remember the joyful declaration of freedom. Whereas Muskogee, in Muskogee, this day of celebration commemorates the heritage of our thriving African-American population. As we honor the courage and fortitude of our ancestors, we renew our commitment to combat injustice with the triumphant spirit of freedom. Now, therefore, I, Mayor of the City of Muskogee, Marlon Coleman, uh, by power of the virtue stated uh, in our charter and ordinances of the City of Muskogee, Oklahoma, do hereby proclaim June 19, 2021, as Juneteenth Day of Celebration. <laughs> our primary Juneteenth organizer for our city is here on tonight, uh, Pastor Wilma Newton. I'm going to ask that she come forward and receive this proclamation and then share any comments uh, regarding that day. We just want to thank everyone that have helped us with the celebration. This is our 14th year here in Muskogee, our 14th year. And we just want to thank everyone, most of our counselors, their supporters. Let me say it like that, okay? Their supporters. And someone approached me last week and they said, well, I thought everything was paid for with a grant. I said, give me the person's number that told you that. <laughs> I said, we've been doing this for 14 years. I have yet to see a grant. I am a grant writer. I have had some invitations, but I couldn't ride the bus with them. Hallelujah. And so we just want to thank you. We want to encourage you to support us. And you say, what is support? Money. Uh-huh. I'm a pastor, so y'all know I know how to talk about money. Amen? Uh-huh. It's about money. Talked with the guy that's ordering the meat today, and someone else said, well, why y'all don't have hot dogs? I said, no. No, we do beef. How many has ever attended Juneteenth? Uh-huh. Yeah. And we will continue a number of our Hmm. Yeah, get teary-eyed. A number of our board has transitioned. And I remember our national president told me years ago, some of you all have met him, met him, Ron Myers, Dr. Ronald Myers. And he said, let me tell you something. Don't do like everybody else. He said, begin to train up young people mm -hmm. with the vision. Amen? Begin to train young people. Because there will come a day that you won't want to go. You just want to go to the park. Mm -hmm. You just want to go to the park. You don't want to go call and say, can we count on you to be supporters this year? Or can we come by? And You know, some people, you got to go. And my granddaughter, who's a millennial, you know, I thank God for her because they're teaching me about Cash App. You know, I didn't grow up with Cash I didn't even grow up with no cell phone. But Cash App. And she said, yeah, Nana, you know, you can do Cash App and this, this, this. And 
I know a number of them say, well, you know, I didn't bring a check. I didn't do cash. But she said, Dana, they can do cash app. And it goes straight over there to Armstrong Bank. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? Uh -huh. And this year, we're thanking you in advance for your support. Mm -hmm. And you said, support money. Mm -hmm. Yes. We've ordered our meat last year. Mm -hmm. We ordered about almost $2,000 worth of brisket. And you know what brisket is this year. Uh-huh. And we want to thank you in advance. And everything in the park is free. Every year I get calls. They said, oh, I want to be a part. I went da-da-da-da-da-da-da to their Juneteenth. And, you know, uh, how much is for vendors? I said, nothing. They said, nothing? Oh, yes, I want to be a part. I said, let me reiterate. Everything in Elliott's Park on the 19th from noon to 5 is free. You know what the next question is, isn't it? How y'all make money? It's not about making money. It's about celebrating freedom. Mm -hmm. Freedom, and they said, well, we'll check with you next year. Mm -hmm. But this is the way we've always done it. And because I am the state director of Oklahoma for Juneteenth, and we talk with the different states do you know we're the only one that does it free? Mm -hmm. That's something to be commended on in Muskogee. You all support us where we can do it as a free celebration. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many has ever been to another Juneteenth celebration, but it's not free. It's not free. It's enjoyable, but it's not free. And I remember I did a educational thing over at Project Transformation, and we taught the young children. Emancipation, and some of them couldn't say emancipation, they said constipation, rancipation, but we taught them. We brought the flag and we taught them. Emancipation, proclamation, slaves were free. And it was so amazing because the other day I was in Walmart and one of the guys yeah, he's almost tall as me. And he said, I remember you. You the emancipation lady. I said, huh? <laughs> yeah. And what are we supposed to do? Teach and train up our young. Mm -hmm. hmm? Want to thank you again for your support. Mm -hmm. Come on, you all. Put your hands together for our council. Uh -huh. I can stand here today and say they support. Mm -hmm. They support. And someone asked me, well, why this, why that? I say, because they supporters. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Because they supporters. Yes, they are supporters. And I say again, thank you for your support. We thank Muskogee. Because without you all, we couldn't have a celebration for free. Mm-hmm. Tell you, the person Muskogee. next to you, see, uh -huh, tell the person next to you, say, we couldn't have a celebration for free right. in Muskogee. Uh-huh. Tell the person next to you that we couldn't have. Uh-uh. No. We could not. And I say again, thank you all. Ms. Newton, remind us what time they're going to start Saturday. Ashley, it starts at 5. No, 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 no. It starts at noon. It starts at noon. And this year, the Lord has blessed us. The VA hospital called me. And they said, usually it's through the week. They said, what type of volunteer can we do? I said, oh, you can go from the kitchen to helping with the children. Uh huh. It starts at noon. But if you work at noon, if you work and you need to come at 11, you tell them, I told you to give you a plate because you got to get back to work. And if you're a supporter, let them know. Say, look, I'm a supporter. Yeah, open your mouth and say, I'm a supporter. I got to be back to work. So, Ms. Newton, we're going to say thank you so we can go on with the rest of our All right. meeting on today. You know you don't give no pastor no mic. <laughs> you know you don't we'll, give me no mic. Yes, ma'am. We'll see you Saturday. Thank you again.
Welcome to tonight's meeting of the Muskogee City Council for June 14, 2021. We will now have the invocation by Councilor Alex Reynolds, followed by the flag salute. Let us stand. Heavenly Father, please forgive us of our sins, those which we've knowingly committed and those which we've committed against our knowledge. Father, please bless Muskogee and the state of Oklahoma, all of our employees and staff and friends and family that live here in this great town. Please give us the wisdom and courage to work hard for our citizens and make good decisions up here. Thank you, Father, for all the blessings you've given us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Attention. Salute. Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Here. We will now consider the approval of the minutes of the Special Call City Council for May 13, 2021. The City Council regular session May 24, 2021 will take other necessary action. Do we have a motion or correction to the minutes? Move for Move. approval. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Any further discussion on the minutes? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. We will now consider the consent agenda, which consists of items 1 through 12. Are there any items on the consent agenda that anyone would like move to the regular agenda? Or do we have a motion to approve the consent move agenda as presented? Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. We will now consider item number 13. Hold a public hearing to discuss the City of Muskogee budget for fiscal year 2021-2022 and take other necessary action. We will now open the public hearing. Mr. Miller. Yes, thank you, Mayor and members of Council. Um, we have spent a lot of time on this budget over the last uh, three plus months. And so what we see tonight is a culmination of a lot of work by staff. I want to single out uh, Jane Kingston and Marcy Gillum in the back um, that have taken the lead in our finance and purchasing department to really get this to where we need to be. And of course, Jennifer Sweezy and uh, as you guys all know, Marsha Wiseman uh, is the key to making it all work. And so as we look at the end of this, it's a lot of work by staff and a lot of work by council. And so what we have today is a miniature version of what you've seen before. And we had the public hearing last week. So I'm gonna go through it um, quickly for uh, benefit of the public and you. And then if there's other questions, we can certainly address, and then we'll, we'll move on to our next item to, to perhaps consider uh, adopting that budget. Um, those are the things we're gonna cover really quickly. Just a few minutes, a few seconds, really, to talk about uh, what, a, what a year it's been and what we've been through uh, dealing with COVID, um, from masks to vaccines to uh, hopefully uh, putting it behind us. Uh, in the middle of that, dealing with all these other things that we hadn't been able to do before, but were able to do even with the pandemic going on, including um, a, a record amount of street repair, including going into neighborhood areas where we hadn't been in a generation or more, thanks to the CIP and the wisdom of the city council and uh, the voters approving it. Um, so we are doing that right now in the northeast zone. The budget that you're getting ready to look at includes the northwest zone, and that will start uh, those sorts of things July 1. So we want to thank uh, city staff especially and the council for putting all that in place um, to make 2021 uh, as good a year as it's been and set, our, set the plate for us as we move forward in 2022. You see where we're at in the process. We're in the implementation stage. We do have a, a, a state mandated deadline uh, to pass our budget here in June. And we've gone through a publication and a first uh, public hearing that's uh, not required by law, but we do extra for extra transparency and then tonight's public hearing. Um, real quickly, we're gonna talk about our reserve fund. Uh, it's been highlighted as one of the best in the state and we do that um, because we only budget current year's revenues. We don't bu budget previous year's revenues and we budget those less uh, expenses to be less than revenues and try and budget for good surprises. 
That lets us put money in our savings account. We call it different names you see there on the screen. But any money that's saved on expenses and any revenue that's higher than the budget is all controlled by the city council and only spent by the city council through a policy you've adopted. Um, and so uh, what you don't see in today's budget is, th is money that uh, we may take in this year that's revenue more than expenses. You guys deal with that separately in a mid-year budget adjustment. And here's what you do. It's a formula that you guys have adopted to use 75% to be applied towards the reserve until it reaches 20%. We need that reserve for times such as we're experiencing. We've had three federally declared disasters at the same time. Uh, the other 25% kind of goes into our special projects fund, and we use that to fund our strategic priorities. And this past year, uh, one of the things we used the special projects fund was for a stipend for employees. Um, we would not have been able to do that if we didn't have uh, that special projects fund set up how it's set up. We did infrastructure improvements. Uh, public safety, we put money towards uh, a police special operations vehicle. Um, we've asked the City of Muskogee Foundation to help us match that. So you guys get a chance to take that, you guys meaning the council, get a chance to take any money that we save on expenses and any money, that any revenue that's higher than, than we budgeted it to, to be, and you guys prioritize that in the middle of the year. So when we, again, when we look at our budget now, we're not talking about 2021 money. We're only talking about new money that's coming in next year. So we do that uh, according to the strategic initiatives you guys have established. Um, streets and infrastructure is the number one uh, priority that the council has recommended. And you can see uh, for the second year in a row, uh, more than $10 million set aside for street projects and the largest water line contractor budget that we've had. Uh, major stormwater projects on the way. We're going to continue with our water and stormwater upgrades. Um, we have several public image initiatives, including community cleanup, trail maintenance, and uh, cleanup along Highway 69. Uh, what's highlighted in green on all these slides are special things that the council has in particular pointed out at the retreat, uh, their budget retreat that they wanted us to address. Um, we have a fully funded economic development program, and what, what I mean by that is we're not, uh, we're not asking to use more money for operations. We're taking that money and putting it all towards uh, as required by the council's ordinance. Um, towards future projects and possible incentives uh, that are uh, approved by council. Uh, housing, um, we have uh, all these opportunities, including infill opportunities that we'll talk more about later tonight even. Um, tourism, a strategic initiative, we have full funding for our, our partners there at the Hall of Fame, Three Rivers, Hat Box, and, and the Batfish. We've also done that while giving uh, additional money uh, for dedicated capital outlay for the Roxy Three Rivers and the Hall of Fame and more than doubling the budget for the Muskogee Tourism Authority. Um, other things that we've implemented in the retreat are here uh, in, in green as you look in your big budget book. Uh, we're not going to go through these one by one, but as you look in the budget, you see those uh, strategic priorities identified. The general fund is a, a main one we want to highlight. Um, it's got, uh, you'll see about 432 employees and about $26 million in salaries and benefits. So a lot of times the service that we provide is a human being, right? It's a firefighter or it's a police officer. So when we're spending money on employees, we're spending money on services directly to our citizens. This is kind of what that looks like in a, in a graph chart. Um, this is uh, the summary. It's driven by revenue and expense assumptions. It's driven by strategic initiatives. It gives us more money for strategic initiatives that you guys have identified. More money for streets and infrastructure, more money for community and cleanup and image. We've got a fully funded economic development plan, matching grant money for housing uh, and infill housing plans. We've got tourism addressed through the hotel motel tax. A couple of things to highlight in your big budget book. Um, again, is the street budget. I, I won't uh, repeat myself too much, but again, Northwest Zone is going to be the focus next year. That's going to be west of Main Street and, and north of Oak Mulgee for uh, about 5.7 to $6 million worth of improvements. Uh, we've got different capital outlay budgets that are dedicated to a parking lot at uh, Robinson near the skate park, as well as a fire station. Um, we talked about the water line uh, budget. We talked about more money for community development and community cleanup. Uh, this is the economic uh, development budget that we talked about, primarily funded out of use tax. And uh, what you see there is uh, at the bottom is that restricted economic development money. That is money set aside to either pay for um, debt service on current projects that we're doing or set aside for the council to incentivize uh, businesses to create growth in Muskogee. Um, this is a hotel motel tax and budget that uh, to, to sum it all up on, on one slide because it passes through the uh, Muskogee Redevelopment Authority 
uh, and the Tourism Authority. And so this is more of a summary slide uh, of what you'll see there. Um, uh, MMA, I wanted to touch on this. It's the Muskogee Municipal Authority. We'll deal with that budget a little later as well. It's about $2.6 million in new money. Uh, we have a special budget within MMA that is a capital budget. And one of the things I want to highlight there on the bottom is, is uh, something that was brought up on our water plant tour that we did with a couple of council members over the last week, um, uh, wondering about uh, what can we do to improve the water treatment plant. And um, there in this budget is uh, a third of a million dollars to do that, to buy uh, new pumps. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, energy and a lot of pumping material, pumping equipment to get that water from the river all the way up uh, on our Heights Hill and Radio Hill on the west side. Um, so this is going to modernize our equipment to do that and will go a long way towards addressing those needs. So uh, as we look at the budget, we do just look at how do we prioritize the strategic initiatives and, and where do we put the money to meet the, the direction um, that the council has provided. And so there's more money than ever for water leaks and streets and new public image and cleanup initiatives. Um, the economic development and housing development are emphasized. Um, we do fund those tourism partners and double the MTA budget and we have uh, availability for um, for raises in this year's budget and we can talk about that in executive session a little later so our next step is uh, we're down to one one next step is we have our public hearing today we ask questions and we provide answers I would do, again want to say if uh, I kind of breeze through that relatively quickly but it's a culmination of three months work and the council has heard all this multiple times at multiple public meetings and so um, this is our opportunity to, uh, to finalize this and uh, to move on and begin planning for next fiscal year. So with that being said, um, this is not an action item, but I would be happy to answer any questions bef uh, and address any, any ideas before we move on to uh, the next agenda item. Thank you, Mr. Miller. No one had signed up to speak to this item. We will now close the public hearing. Do we have any questions from the council regarding the budget on tonight? at least the public hearing section where we are. No questions from the council. Thank you, Mr. Miller. We will move on to item number 14. Consider approval of resolution number 2864, <coughs> approving the city of Muskogee budget for fiscal year 2021-2022, establishing <coughs> budget amendment authority or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Yeah, so what you have before you is the resolution that we, we do for the state uh, that we send in to, to show them that we have done our job that they've required of us um, with the uh, attachments as well that we have uh, just talked about. So um, this, is the, this is the resolution that does what we said uh, in the previous uh, agenda item. So uh, city staff would recommend approval and be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Do we have any questions for Mr. Miller tonight concerning the budget resolution? Mr. Mayor, might be recognized. Yes. Uh, I just have a couple of questions, kind of my first round going through this, but on uh, Section 2, <clears throat> where the ability to give the, you the right to transfer funds without council approval, how often does it happen? And, like, what's, I mean, when you say transferring funds, how much are we talking about on that just kind of gets moved without yeah. council's knowledge? So it's very rare. Um, what usually happens within a budget, so somebody will say, I'm budgeted for, uh, this happens in sanitation in the last few years. They'll say, we budgeted for, uh, 18 employees and we didn't have enough we need to hire temps so we transfer money from salary line item to contract services line item so we can get a temp on the back of the truck um, the uh, I can't transfer money between funds so if it's in the general fund it stays in the general fund uh, I don't remember a time when I've transferred money between departments so if somebody says we uh, I need more money to do something in uh, planning and they say, my budget's out. I need to borrow money from the police budget. Doesn't happen. Uh, I don't remember it happening since I've been here five years. So the, what happens is if you guys approve money to go into a department, it stays uh, in the department. It has to stay in the fund by this definition. Um, and, uh, and what changes a lot of times is the characterization of it. So we might not spend it on an employee. We might spend it on a temp. Um, we've done one um, recently, actually, on uh, some, one of the items that we're doing today is, um, is within police department. They're buying uh, computers. 
they're buying computers out of instead of buying um, some other equipment that they had that they weren't going to be able to get this fiscal year. So it stayed in police. They decided that um, in, uh, when we get to that item, Chief Tee, he may enlighten us more. But that's just an example. Um, they decided in the middle of the year that they needed this tool rather than this tool, It'd be in a different budget. So that's, uh, that's the kind of thing that happens. Councilor Hoos, I think to add to your uh, question and conversation, I think at some point the council does need to have a discussion uh, regarding how we fund uh, special projects fund relative to uh, funds that are left over within respective budgets. Uh, so for example, uh, to the example that Mr. Miller gave about vacancies, if money is left over for vacancies, um, council needs to have a conversation about whether or not uh, we want that money to be uh, approved by us to do something different with or leave it as is uh, with the discretion of the city manager because I think one of the things that we need to be certain of is that whatever policies we have in place uh, that they have the muster for us to be able to carry the bucket on so I think at some point we need to have that conversation not tonight of course but I think that may help yes thank you Further comments for Mr. Miller tonight before we adopt the resolution? Council, do you have the information you need before we adopt the resolution? We'll entertain a motion. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt uh, the uh, budget resolution for FY21-22. Uh, Any further discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jerry Creed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number 15. Consider approval of resolution number 2868 authorizing the continuation of the account fund for the City of Muskogee entitled Solid Waste Improvements and designating the manner in which said account shall be operated for the upcoming budget year 2021-2022 or take other necessary action. Mr. Stewart. Yes, Mayor and Council, this resolution goes kind of hand in hand with the budget approval. Uh, what this does is this establishes our 212 fund, which is our Solid Waste Improvement Fund. It's a uh, vehicle that allows us to take $2.50 from the utility bill and actually fund this account. And the, the purpose of this account is to help us purchase new trucks, uh, new poly carts, uh, new containers, and then just keep the sanitation department running. So we do recommend approval, and I'll answer any of your questions. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Do we have any questions regarding this item? Mr. Stewart, I have a question. Do we recycle uh, poly carts that are no longer in use? So we are currently uh, looking at our used carts, and we have a 10-year warranty on those carts. And uh, up to that 10th year, we're going to try to get them replaced. And then the ones that are older than 10 years, then we do put them out for recycling. And we usually bring that before council, by the way, when we do. Thank you. And one piece I left out, this, this pulls in just about 380000 a year, by the way, is what it funds it. Do we have any further conversation for Mr. Stewart, or do we have a motion to approve the resolution? Move for approval. Second. Been properly moved in. Second. Any further conversation? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number 16. Consider approval of amended ordinance number 4123A, amending chapter 22, business regulations, section 22-675, general requirements, amending subsection 22-675-0, restricting smoking and vaping of medical marijuana at city-owned or operated facilities to the southwest area of Hatbox Field and the south parking lot of the Civic Center, providing for repealer, severability, and setting an effective date, or take other necessary action. This is my item, members of the council. I don't have any new information to present other than the summary that I presented on last week, which is basically that we would have the restriction to remove uh, the smoking of medical marijuana uh, at events held at uh, public parks. So I move to approve as previously presented. Second. 
Uh, it's been motion and second. Do we have any discussion from the council? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'll be recognized. Yes. I uh, remember when we were sitting in council retreat talking about this same item here. I uh, remember when we had a four to four vote. And Mayor, you were the deciding vote. You are deciding vote. To leave this out of the parks, leave it out of Hatbox, and leave it out the Civic Center. So it passed. We done that. But what <clears throat> gets me now is when me, Deputy Mayor, Reed, and you stood right out there in that hall and do we discuss this. And you told us, and Deputy Marie is my witness. I don't feel right. I can't sleep because of what this, boy, where have we done this? It was wrong to do this. And you said we were going to redo it. Trust me, sir, I believed you. I believed you all the way. But now, tonight, uh, like I said, it's an old saying. You show me once, I'll believe, I'll believe you. You didn't show me twice. Same thing over the mask. You've showed me. I believe you, Mayor. And I think it's a great idea to leave it out of the parks. Perfect idea. But when it comes to being on our facilities, period, it's wrong. It's just not right. I've had calls, and <clears throat> I already know what the game plan is. You know, Hatbox is bigger. The Civic Center is bigger. The Civic Center, if I have any, I told you, I'll say this again. The other night, when I, at Public Works, I told you, I had no problem with marijuana because I, have a, I had a lady that I helped get marijuana, and it helped her back. But the problem that I have is, is that it's just wrong. It's just wrong. We, uh, like Councilman Reed, I mean Deputy Mayor Reed say, we are stewards, stewards up here for this city. We supposed to look out for our citizens. And when I see that this marijuana is going on our city property, after I have seen from my, with my own eyes two events here in Muskogee, Oklahoma, one down on Main Street at the dispensary where they had uh, jumping things for kids, smoking down there, smoke going everywhere. That's one. The second one, we got a post office that we can't, old post office that has the grow house in it, we can't even control. We pull their license, we find them, but they still stink up the downtown of Moscow. Third thing is down on Broadway, that right there was a disgrace to our city and to our state. It's no way older people should have been looking at that and kids up in those apartments and hearing all that cussing and all them throwing out blunts. That was just the most ridiculous thing I ever seen. But none of you councilmen were there. Yeah, one. Another thing I'm gonna say about this marijuana, in order to get that permit they got to do that, they had to go before the tourism board. They went before the tourism board, but oh, I thank God the tourism board turned them down. Because if, that, if they were to pass that, $7,500 is what that dispensary down there on Main Street, one of them, there's two of them down there, but one of them put that on down there on our Broadway where we had to close our streets. But they had enough sense not to do that, to give them that money. And so that right there should have showed us something. But the reason you want to do it now, I know people want Rockahoma to come here to Muskogee, but Rockahoma ain't coming to Muskogee. That ain't happening. And y'all say it's all about, I, I, I read your quote in the paper saying it was about development, economic development, and tourism. And I, I'm looking at a paper I got here in my packet where you got tourism, economic development scratched out. Am I correct, Roy? It's scratched out right here what I'm looking at on this packet. Are you talking about the ordinance that was yeah. amended? Yes, we've, ex we've crossed out the explanation and, and only incorporated 
uh, what was discussed at the last right. committee meeting. Correct. But like I say, you said this in, that, in the newspaper just last week before me and Derry got to talk. We're going to have economic development and tourism. That's not going to help us. When they go to the Civic Center, <coughs> people of Muskogee, I want you to realize this. When they go to the Civic Center with this conference, which I have nothing against, people need to know about that plant. And they need to know it well. The thing is, when they do this, not only they're going to have to rent the whole Civic Center out, which will cost $2,400 starting out to rent the whole Civic Center. And you're talking about putting it on the south side of where the parking lot is. And you're going, I think, I guess you're still going to use the tent, which I think is a crazy idea to use a tent, the smoking and the Medicaid. It's going to be right there by our number one problem we got downtown right now. Because was in Muskogee, I want y'all to listen to my voice tonight. Something's wrong with this picture. A downtown already stinks, but when that comes, it's going to stink, stink even more. And another thing is, <laughs> I want to know tonight, the insurance. If something happens, I told you this when we had those masks. If something happens, I want to know who's definitely responsible. If somebody, because it's against state law. If you're going to smoke out there and have a tent and get in it and puff, 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 Get in your car and drive, and I'm pretty sure Chief T. he can back this up, that it's against state law. You cannot do that. And when they do do that, they're leaving our property, the city's property, that we're stewards over. If somebody in my family or somebody in all the councilmen and mayor's family up here get killed or in the audience, we're going to have a problem with that. Y'all ain't looking at that situation. Because I know when you get in the clubs, I'm pretty sure Mr. Reynolds can contest it is. When you're in the clubs, you have a club and you got alcohol and everything, you got to carry so much insurance. If you don't, you get sued. You better have some insurance. So those two things right there has not been explained to me on this. And that hat box, the deal is out there is that you want to have a concert. It's fine to have a concert. I don't have no problem with having a concert. But you don't have to smoke dope out there. Marijuana, I mean, it's, it's not dope. It's medical purposes. For medical purposes. You don't have to do it out there. And you don't have to do it at our Civic Center. I'm just trying to get y'all to see some things up here. That we could be, I know, if, if we don't have the insurance, I don't know, Roy, answer this question for me, please. When we do this, and I know it's going to pass tonight. But it won't pass on Ivory Van's vote. Tell me, when they, if a person leaves the Civic Center and the chief police officers stop them after they done just left our Civic Center, and that's a DUI, because you're not supposed to get drive. If they're intoxicated, that's They're correct. intoxicated. But you're not supposed to get under that wheel with that marijuana, what I was told. That's correct. Period. I don't care if I just go, <laughs> just because it did it don't mean I know how to do it. I just want y'all to know that. Because <laughs> I know, hey, I remember but, up there smoking itself. But I do want to be—I do want to be clear. You have to reach a level of intoxication, and so that one puff may be an intoxicating level for some, but not everyone. Okay. So they have certain the police officer, when they pull over someone who has those signs, have a number of tests that they perform on those to see if there is probable cause to believe that they're intoxicated. Okay, if they're intoxicated enough. Before they even get pulled over, they're going out. They done smoked in their tent. They're going out and they're leaving down, going down 69 Highway. They hit my child and kill him. I hit anybody's child or mother or whoever up here and kill him. Who's responsible when, I leave, when they leave our facility, Roy? It wouldn't be the city, if that's your question. Okay. What you're talking about are dram shop laws, and those are specific to alcohol. And they're specific to alcohol because, like, for example, if you're at a bar, the bar is actually selling or providing the product that led to the intoxication. Here, we are not selling or providing the medical marijuana. It's being brought by them, the, the patient, and utilized there. So we wouldn't have any liability for that. If anything, the liability would be on the part of an organizer, and that's still questionable. 
but for most of our uses uh, at our facilities, we do require insurance. Uh, Brooke, I believe that's for, if somebody rents a facility, do we require insurance? Yes. Yeah. You know how much? Um, it's usually the amount of the Governmental Tort Claims Act, so uh, 100, or, yeah, 125,000 uh, or a million combined. Mr. Van and Mr. Tucker, let me say we have a motion and a second, and we need to call for the question. Mr. Mayor, you know, you know, I, I, I asked Mr. There's something going on back there. Oh, oh. I, I thought it was. <laughs> you know, I'm getting tired of being cut off. You know what? When I sit at that mic, you could cut me off all day long. But I sit up here as a councilman just like you know better than I am, Mayor. You do, only thing is you sign documents, kiss babies, and, and, and drink a lot of hot chocolate. But other than that, you know better than me. So I get tired of sitting up here being cut off as a councilman when I'm asking the city attorney a question about safety in somebody's life. Do I make myself clear? Roll call. You didn't have nothing to say, Councilor Reed? Deputy Mayor Reed? I'm going to respect the mayor's roll call. You respect him all at once because I don't, I don't respect him at all. From now on, I will never respect this mayor sitting in that seat. Point of order. We're getting off topic. Abusive. No, it ain't abusive. It's a Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Definitely no. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? No. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number 17. Consider the appointment of Wayne Johnson to the Martin Luther King Community Trust Authority, filling the expired term of Kenny Payne beginning August 1, 2021, and ending on September 30, 2026, or take other necessary action. Councilor Stout. Yes, uh, I think Wayne will be a great asset to this board, and I move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number 18. Consider approval to award the contract to Go Fresh for $37 per food box for the Nutrition Assistance Food Box Program funded by the Community Development Block Grant, COVID Response Grant, or take other necessary action. Ms. Callahan. Yes, thank you, Mayor and Council. This is a grant that was provided by the Oklahoma Department of Commerce. It is a Community Development Block Grant that is the COVID response. And the city was funded um, uh, approximately $405,000. We're working on the projects as we get the release of funds on the projects that were identified. One of those that we are working on is the um, food box for nutrition assistance. It was an eligible activity. We did send out bids um, several weeks ago, did um, about a month ago, did not receive any bids, and we had to back up and um, kind of re reroute it because we had heard that there were some that would not contract with the city government. So out of the uh, goodness of their heart and really appreciate their service, the nonprofit Neighbors Building Neighborhoods um, Resource Center, uh, the nonprofit resource center has supported this and helped us partner with it on um, spinning the bids, getting the advertisement out. And we had one bid um, that was submitted from GoFresh at $37 per box. Um, this will allow for um, approximately 5,000 boxes for nine, and nine weeks. We're going to do two, two days a week. And we're also partnering with the Muskogee Housing Authority. The um, food boxes will be distributed at those sites, and that way we can document that it is low to moderate income that's being served, and also then we will um, document that it is COVID-related. Um, they're um, I'm happy to answer any questions. And uh, Kim Lynch is here with the Neighbors Building Neighborhoods to answer any questions on their partnering part of it. I will uh, note that the foundation funding that isn't a match, it was just an added um, fund, is no longer available. But we do have the VISTA volunteers from AmeriCorps funding available. Ms. Callahan, when does the uh, giveaway begin? That's a good question because we have to get our release of funds from the Department of Commerce and um, I submitted the last paperwork today so it should be this week we'll know. 
we have our VISTA volunteers ready, and as soon as we can get the release of funds and the go ahead to spend money, then we'll contract with GoFresh and get started. We were hoping by the 15th, but that's probably going to have to be more like the first part of July. All right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have any other questions for Ms. Callahan? Uh, yes, I had a question. Uh, will there be any um, one else that may be able to uh, receive? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. It's not just the housing authority. Okay. Um, anybody can drive. It, it will have it to where you can drive through and get it. What we had learned from some of the other food box distributions that there were some people um, that didn't have rides, didn't have vehicles, and this way we're um, able to meet the needs of those that are in those the, those apartments and those facilities. But anybody's welcome. We just have to document <coughs> the low to moderate income, and it just has to be 51%. So we're just trying to you know, make sure that it was an easy documentation on our low to moderate income, but anybody's welcome to the food boxes. Thank you. Move for approval. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Jarek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. Item number 19. Consider approval for the Muskogee Police Department to purchase 23 GTAC replacement laptops for police vehicles from Bright Computers on state contract in the amount of $64,131.09 or take other necessary action. GT. Mayor, members of council, this is uh, kind of an explanation to what the manager talked about earlier. Uh, because of COVID last year, we didn't get a chance to use very little actually of our uh, training and travel uh, budget as well as our ammunition budget. Uh, ammunition uh, is, if you can order it, it's extremely expensive and it's extremely delayed as far as its arrival. So we have been able to get enough uh, ammunition for our uh, annual qualifications, but uh, to order anything else above that was just uh, didn't make a lot of sense there. So what we, what I requested <coughs> of the manager, oh, the other thing was our uh, um, police athletic fund, uh, which obviously you all know um, I hold very dear to my heart. Uh, we took those three and combined them because of COVID. We didn't have the ability to use or actually very little of those uh, during the fiscal year this year. Uh, one of the things that we're going to have to have is computers for all of the patrol cars. Uh, the ones we currently have are about 10 years old or coming to the end of life expectancy, and they do not replace and do not repair these particular computers anymore. You all know how electronics work. So uh, we thought we would combine what we did not have the ability to use last year and use that to at least buy about half of the computers that we're going to need in the near future. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Move for approval. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have further discussion? Mr. Mayor, if I may, yes. uh, I'd just like to clarify, uh, we were able to squeeze an extra computer into the budget. So the agenda item says 24 or 23, but if you look on your uh, the, the bid tab in the back, it says 24. So we would like the authorization to spend that amount for 24 computers. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number 20. Consider approval to receive donated funds for the month of May 2021 in the amount of $1,400 for the city's police department or take other necessary action. Chief Teehee. No, they were back to back. Uh, this is one I'm going to take just a minute. I don't usually like speaking uh, publicly, but I want to on this particular thing. I'd ask this donor to uh, come tonight to be recognized. She's elderly and couldn't. Uh, but this is one of those things where I want you all to know that I thank my Lord many times that I'm in charge of a police department in Muskogee, Oklahoma. Uh, my brothers and sisters in law enforcement on the East Coast, West Coast, and other areas of the country don't have near the support that we have, not only from our council, but especially from our citizens. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where, and I did ask her for her, about her name, so I get to recognize her by name. I'm not sure it's on there, but Mrs. Carol Hartwell is the one who donated this money to us. Uh, she read something, saw us, something in the paper or something somewhere uh, with regards to the news and if you notice that $1,400 there's a reason because that's uh, was actually her stimulus check money 
Uh, she decided that she would rather have that go to her local police department for assisting us with safety measures uh, as opposed to using that. So that's what this is, and I would like to uh, commend Mrs. Hartwell uh, for that donation. And it just gives you a good idea, uh, and it's something that I can pass on to my officers uh, about the support that we have not only with this body in front of us but also with our citizens of Muskogee. Uh, and, again, I thank the good Lord many times over that I am in charge of a police department that has that type of support from its city. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions for Chief T? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes, the item passes. Item number 22. I'm sorry, 21. Consider approval to authorize the submission of, and if approved, accept a grant application for the Muskogee Civic Center for an SBA shuttered venue operator grant in the amount of $87,207.76 or take other necessary action. Ms. Lazy. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. This item is the first time it's been reviewed by Council due to the nature of uh, the schedule. We weren't able to send it to committee first. So it, as it says, it is a shuttered venue operators grant application. We did already submit it through the SBA, the Small Business Administration. It's a federal funding grant for facilities such as our Civic Center. So we did apply with the help of Neighbors Building Neighborhoods and the amount is based on a percentage of revenue that was uh, lost or dropped from 2019 to 2020 for the same period. So if selected, we would receive up to $87,207.76 and staff recommends approval and it is already submitted. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Ms. Swayze on tonight? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to authorize for submission. Any further discussion? Roll you, call. I just I'm had sorry, a question. You just said it's for loss, loss of funds from 2019. Yes. So okay. because we couldn't have as many events, hardly any during the pandemic, um, it can be used to basically pay ourselves back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. Item number 22. Receive report on the City of Muskogee's Adopt a Trail program or take other necessary action. Council, we have been getting several concerns from our residents about the maintenance of our trails, particularly as they relate to the number of debris or trash items that we see more and more. And so we are following up now on the adopt a trail program that we had authorized uh, some time ago. And I believe that uh, Mr. Miller has staff that will come uh, to the podium at this time, Brooke, uh, and talk to us about the adopt a trail program and how businesses and individuals can participate. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, first, I'd like to say that we appreciate those that have been volunteering and these people give their time and that is just as important as uh, any, any funding or, or uh, volunteer uh, work that, that we can receive as a city. Uh, the slides I had will show you the, uh, on, our, on our website, you will see the uh, oh, trails page on the city website, cityofmuskogee.org. I go to the Muskogee Parks and Recreation section and our trails page will show you the packet of information that gives all the details on the program. We have a Muskogee Parks and Recreation Facebook page. We would love for everyone to like it. And then I've created a community group that will be for those volunteers and trail advocates that would like to help. And we'll be able to communicate through that. Uh, it's a private group, but it's open to anyone interested in joining. Uh, so that is an option for them. This is our trail map, and we've divided it into 10 sections. We have three currently that uh, are adopted. It's uh, two are adopted by Muskogee Area Cycling Groups, and then our third 
uh, section is adopted by our YVC volunteers, which are, is our youth volunteer corps within our department. So we're looking for more advocates. Our plan is to schedule three organized cleanups that we'll promote, and that'll be in March in preparation for the Azalea Festival, and then July, November, we ask that teams or individuals that would like to participate uh, contact me and we'll assign them a section and we can all work together as a group. Uh, the, my email and uh, I can be reached by phone uh, and also through our Facebook page. So I welcome help. We have wonderful employees that work hard. Their time is limited and ha the number of employees we have are limited. So any trail advocates that wish to help, we appreciate their help so much. And uh, we, we stay busy cleaning up throughout the week. When we're notified of a particular problem, we try to, to take, take care of that and handle that as soon as possible. Uh, we work with the uh, community work group as well. There's a youth group that works on the weekends, and that's a great group to help pick up trash as well. So. It is important that we do it in a timely manner, and we understand that. And I want you to know that the staff understand that as well, and they do a great job. And the few that we have, when I call about a problem, I've worked for the city for 16 years, and I've never had them complain. And when they call, or when I call them and we visit, they are willing and able and will handle it as quickly as they can. So I just want to commend them too for their work. Any Brooke, questions? are there any areas on the trail that need more help than others? So in other words, if residents or businesses wanted to tackle a major issue, do you all know which ones they should there, tackle first? I think there are certain areas that have been identified, especially the Ill illegal dumping sites. Um, some of those are on private property close to the trail and some are on city property. So, you know, we have our, our mowing crews that go out too, so so we do have eyes on the trail uh, with staff, but then also we count on our citizens that are using the trail to let us know as well. So yes, we've identified some of those problem areas, and those are some of those are the most challenging <coughs> to tackle. I'm just wondering if you can make a post about what those areas are, okay. so that as people signed up, uh, they'll know which okay. areas they may want to address I'll first. Do that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other questions for this item? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, Bell, do you recognize? Yes. I uh, seen the other day on Facebook, book where people was hunting pills, bottles all along the trail and stuff. You, did you see that? Yeah. Pill bottles? Pill, pill bottles. Oh, oh, yes, All yes, on yes. the trail. Yes, yes. A lot of stuff like that. That sparked some discussion, yes. That's what, that's what I'm talking about up here. <laughs> we always come to life when we get somebody calls us like that. Any other time, we just kind of like to, these, kids, these people riding on this bike, we just cruise on through. Because I remember, if I'm right, Mayor, was it three years ago, me and you and Mark Wilkerson, then we walked, this, we walked from uh, the starting of the trail in Ward 3 all the way to Main Street. You too, Mr. Miller. We walked that trail. Remember that? They was having problems then, still having problems. I just hate to see that we just always, if somebody bring it to our attention, we got to just jump on it right then. We should have been taking care of these problems in the beginning. Because like I say, we've done this three years ago. So, Councilor Van, I would say, and Brooke, Brooke pointed out earlier, our staff does mm -hmm. all the time. And sometimes people post it on the Facebook before we get out there. But we've got, and we're happy. If somebody points out something we can do better, we're happy to do it better. Uh, but we do that every day. And sometimes uh, when people say, hey, you need to get out there on it, we agree. Uh, if there's pill bottles that somebody else has thrown out there, Keep in mind, we're trying, uh, our goal is, uh, and part of what we're working on, uh, and part of the stuff that's budgeted next year, we want to make sure, um, ideally, we don't have that people throwing the trash out, right? <laughs> we want to give them the opportunity to not do that to our city, because our staff can keep up and our volunteers can keep up, but the best thing is if, if they can focus their efforts on something else, so. I understand, Mr. Miller, but I'm, my point is, I hate to see when we take a picture, we jump right on it. Other than that, we just let the flow go. And you know I'm telling you the truth up here. Come on now. Y'all got to be for real up here. Don't just be playing with our citizens. You know, I'll turn the floor back with you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, 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 be recognized. Yes. Um, I have a question, Brooke. For the 
for the three cleanups in March, July, and November, and for the adopted trail, can you take a can you take a side by side and a small garden trailer along? I don't know by bicycle or walking. I don't know how much trash you're actually going to be able to accomplish picking up. Could we, if just say I, one of my businesses wanted to volunteer to take care of a section, could we show up in a side by side with a little trailer and actually get it knocked out? I think maybe we could consider that for these date, maybe approval for those dates. I'd want to sit down and visit with Mark Wilkerson um, about that. But if we set some parameters just so that, you know, we know those days, you know, just that we can get the word out. Um, we did break it up into sections, so that does make it a little uh, easier to be able to travel that particular section, it's not quite such a long distance. Uh, so we could discuss those options, yes. Thank you. Turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Any other questions for staff on tonight? Thank you. Item number 23. Receive report and discuss Restore Hope, a nonprofit program for residents who need help paying bills and take other necessary action. Council, I'm going to uh, bring uh, Reverend Walker to the podium to give us more information about this, but as he's coming, I also want to take this opportunity to compliment the Rayfield Church for what they've done, uh, not only on this project for being an application center, but in times past, uh, taking the lead to feed our seniors in many instances. And so I will turn this over now to Reverend Walker. Mr. Mayor, may I hand you this? Yes, sir. All of you are. here what this is the restore hope is an organization out of Tulsa that's administering this program that's been funded by the COVID-19 government program they have over 260 million dollars allocated to Oklahoma and it has not been publicized to the degree that a lot of money is not being allocated it's not being spent to the citizens like they should so what they did, they contacted our state president, uh, Dr. Anthony Scott, for the Baptist uh, Convention, and he called some churches, six churches across the state of Oklahoma that have partnered with them to do this, to be what we call an application station, and where people can come in and apply. Uh, Restore Hope will have people there to help assist people to apply for these grants and for this money. Uh, they will pay back they will go back as far as 15 months if a person owe rent. But they'll go back 15 months to pay rent. Also, if they owe utility bills, they'll go back as far as necessary to pay the utility bills. So we, we have agreed to be a site for the month of June. So every Saturday from 2 o'clock, excuse me, from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, uh, our building is open for people to come in and apply for this money. Now, they do not have to come. Uh, on this brochure that I handed out to you, the Restore Hope website is on there. And that package I gave you, Mr. Mayor, it is the application itself. Now, that was about 19 pages, so I didn't print one for all of you all. But uh, you can go in there and look at that, and a person can actually apply if they can go online themselves to apply. So. What we're doing is hosting it at the church, and it's, it's Tulsa, Ballsville, and Rayfield is on the east side, what they call the east side of the state. Oklahoma City, Lawton, and Valiant is where people can go and apply. So what we want to do is get this word out. <clears throat> we had a meeting, a Zoom meeting, about three weeks ago when they first approached us to do this. There was a little confusion on it, what the rules, what the regulations, and they thought they had explained everything real good, but mm, they hadn't. So it was <laughs> we found out each week now. We was open last week and this week, but we're hoping, you know, I put it on our Facebook page, uh, Rayfield Facebook page, they sent me a clip to where I could post it to our page, and I, I sent it to you. I think you got it, Mr. Mayor. So what we want people to do is get it out to people, tell people about this, that they can come in. It's for low and moderate income people that they can come in and fill out the application, and then they will be certified to possibly get this money. Now, what happened is, is that if a person, and I, I got clarity from the director of uh, Restore Hope today, 
they could be up to date on their rent and their utilities, but they can still apply for the next three months to get their rent paid. They can't apply for the utilities because they don't know what the utilities is going to be. So they can uh, still come in and apply for that money. They can go online and apply for that money. And uh, the landlord cannot apply for the renter, but the landlord can assist the renter in filling out the application. And if there is a unique situation where a renter can't come in, I understand they have to have a signed document to where this person can do it for them. So another thing is that they, re they communicate with email to the once a person apply and some people don't have email but they got family and friends that have email if they give those uh authority to send that information to to them like you can they can send it to you at your church and you can handle their whole church if you want to but uh but that's how they communicate through email so what we want to do is is get this information out if the money is not uh spent out or not handed out by September, it goes back to the federal government. So there's a great push on it. Now, in talking to the director, possibly if there is an influx of people applying, they may extend it to December or January. So, but that's, that's where we are. So Maybe. what we want to do is, and I want to make it very plain, this is not a Rayfield program. People call in and say, I understand y'all paying bills at Rayfield. No, we're not paying bills at Rayfield. <laughs> that could get, that's, that could snowball real quick. But I want to make sure everybody is listening in out there. Rayfield is not paying utility bills and rent. But they can come down there and apply. Our staff is working with the staff <coughs> from Hope to try to do this. And another thing, if they come in with their cell phone, we can assist them. If they can get in online at cell phone, we can assist them while they're there to go in and apply while they're there. So and then if they can't fill out everything, they can go back and get it. Mr. Mayor, on that second page, and this is one thing, I'll just touch base on this. If you're going on the application process, it says up there before you apply, and then you have to have your name and address and your utility information, your tax and all this stuff. But the direct say the key to it is get them in the system. Once they get them in the system, they'll have a number that they can go in on that number and check and see where they are. And then if there's some more information necessary, they will contact you and say, we need this document, we need this document. But what we're encouraging people to do is bring your rent receipts in, bring your landlord information, get your utility bills, bring that all in with you when you come, and they will get you fully applied where you don't have to do anything else but wait and see where it is. Now, once, once a, a, a tenant apply, the landlord will agree that I will wait on this money. They cannot evict that person in that. They have even gone to court, they say, where a person has an eviction notice and, uh, and show them that they're going to pay this money for this tenant. So that's, it's, it's money out here, and uh, we just need to get it out. We need to get it out to the citizens of Muskogee. It's not just Muskogee. It's Muskogee area. Muskogee area. It's not just Muskogee. People come from Fort Gibson, Wagner, Shakota, McAllister. They can come from anywhere and apply at, the, we, at this station. So he said they have over 9,000 applicants in eastern Oklahoma so far. But most of them is in Tulsa because Tulsa had gotten kind of ahead of it a little bit. And uh, it's, it's new to us. So if any of you all have any questions, that's kind of a helicopter view of what the program is about. But if you take that brochure and go in online on their website, you can see that application and everything. So we want to get it out, get it out. It's on our web page. I mean, it's on our Facebook page, Rayfield Baptist Facebook page. You can share, share that link with anyone you want to. And it's at 10 to 2 10 daily. to 2. 10 to 2 at Rayfield. Monday through Friday. No, 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 no. Just Saturday. Saturday oh, just Saturdays. Morning. Yes, okay. ma'am. 10 to 2 on Saturdays. And we're going to evaluate this. Uh, the, the six churches are going to look at how it went over so far. And we may, no, I'm not going to say that because people be coming in. But we're going to look at it. We're going to look at it. It may be extended. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go that route. Okay. Ten that to was going to be my question, Reverend Walker. Um, what would be the, do we know yet what the possibility would be for it being extended beyond June, but we're not certain yet? We don't know yet. We're going to evaluate and see what the, what the result was this month. We're going to do a, a, a kind of a roundtable to see if we need to go farther, we will. We will. And uh, 
So we coordinate it to all churches that's doing it at the same time, the same date. So we right. try to coordinate that all over the, the state. But please get the word out. That's, that's the key. Get the word out to our community and surrounding areas. And, you know, some landlords found out about it, so they made sure their tenants came in and said, you need to go in and get that money. You need to go in and apply for that money. And so one landlord called me and he said he hadn't been paid since January, but he's having a, a tiff with one of the customers of his, and it, it's, it's, it's free money. What? Yeah. Do you have any more literature that you can, you can I pass just, only thing I had is this here. That's what I'm saying. Can we pick those up at Rayfield? No, they didn't bring that. I brought what they gave me Saturday. So oh, okay. this, now you can copy this. They say you can copy this and distribute it. It's not. It's it's. Uh, okay, we can. Okay. Yeah, you can copy it. And if you go online, you can you can get all the information. If you go to their website, you'll get this package. This is the application package. Okay. But I wish I'd have had more literature. But they just had a few brochures. Okay. So I'm asking him this week if he would bring more brochures to put in people's hands. Mr. Mayor, but we recognize. Yes. Reverend Walker, you were saying that you can be caught up on your rent and they'll pay you for three months out? Yeah. That, I found out today that he said that if, let's say in June they paid up, uh -huh. they just paid their rent, but they still can apply. He said, tell them to still apply because they could possibly pay for the next three months. Now, do they go on your income? Pardon me? Do they go on your income? There is an income level in that, yes. There is, there is a, 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 I don't have that in front of me, but there is a, a income level in there. It is. It's, it's an income level in there. Sounds like a good program. It is a great program. Great program. It's low and moderate income. And it's quite how many people you have in your household. You know how that goes. It's a step, mm -hmm. step up process. Turn the floor back over, Mr. Mayor. And Councilor Van, I was going to say, I think one of the benefits of it being low to moderate is that the net of people that it can actually catch sure. um, this time versus other programs that only cover low income or things like that. Yeah. Uh, this can capture the mom and dad who both work but maybe don't have the uh, adequate income combined right. um, to be able to keep up. Right. So this, this is out there. Now, they do not pay mortgages. Oh, they do not pay mortgages. Because people ask that person, will they pay my mortgage? No, they don't pay mortgage. But if you have renters, you get them to get paid. Your mortgage is getting paid. <laughs> Just saying. I might get paid, bro. Uh, I might get paid. You might get paid. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, encourage people. To, but bottom line is, man, if you put it out there in, in your Facebook and get people to do it, let's let's get people to come in and do this do people sign for the next two weeks at least. Right. Okay. And we're hoping people don't wait till the last week and try to flood in there. So they need to come this week and next week and, uh, and apply. Okay. Any other questions for me? Any questions for Reverend Walker? Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Item number 24. Consider approval of a request for honorary street naming designating a portion of Lenapaw Street from 12th Street West for one block as Smokehouse Bob Newton Drive or take other necessary action. Council, I think it's uh, appropriate and fitting that as we look forward to the Juneteenth activities on this coming weekend, that we pause to recognize uh, one of our patrons or proprietors, rather, who had done so much for that event, Smokehouse Bob Newton. Uh, for several decades, uh, he and his family have been great contributors to the city of Muskogee. He recently passed away, and after visiting with his family, I thought it would be uh, nice on behalf of the council and respectful for all of the work that he had done, particularly as we face this weekend, uh, that we would proceed uh, with this street name and request uh, as described in item number 24 to name that section of the street Smokehouse Bob Newton Drive. Uh, we will, if approved, uh, the family is having an event uh, Friday at 6 p.m. on the parking lot of the former Smokehouse Bob's Restaurant, uh, and the public will be invited uh, to attend that event uh, as we proceed with that name recognition or street renaming and celebratory fashion uh, if this is approved on tonight. So that would be my recommendation for approval. Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Do we have any further discussion? Roll call. 
Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. We have one resident signed up to speak to us tonight. That would be Councilor Ivory Van. If you give us your name and your address, and you'll have three minutes. Councilman Ivory Van, 4338 Columbus Street. The reason I was going to talk to you tonight, on Memorial Day, I went to the Women's Conference Breakfast for Mayors. I um, went to see Ms. Uh, Marilyn Van and Ms. Foley receive awards. They're very outstanding awards. Also, I met Joanne Wood Woodhouse. She's a financial advisor for 33 years on uh, Wall Street and other, other ventures. She's a very interesting lady. And also, uh, I met a Goodwill ambassador. Her name was uh, Queen Mother Brick Blakely. She's an ambassador of, uh, to Africa at the United Nations. Very nice lady. Also, remember I said I go to these trips to the National League of Cities. And so I go to the National League of Cities. The first one I went to was the National League of Cities for the Black Caucus. And lo and behold, Mr. Simmons, he was there. He's the ex-mayor of District Heights in Maryland. Also, Mr. John Ford, he's just like you, Mayor. He's the first Tuskegee uh, American African mayor in Tuskegee, Alabama. So, like I said, I had a nice time. It was nice reuniting with people that you've met before, but also it was a nice meeting these new people also. And another thing we did was this past week, me and uh, the city manager and uh, Councilman Morgan and uh, some other people, we went out to the water plant. It's a very interesting experience. I mean, I learned a lot out there. I know I've <laughs> kind of talked about the water plant a little bit up here. They teased me about having a bottle of water, but, you know, that's just part of it. Everybody got a bottle of water in their refrigerator. I don't care who's up here, they do. But I really enjoyed it, and I would advise the new councilman to go out and go around to different, like, even I don't want to go to the next place I want to go I hadn't been is the pollution plant. I like to go out there. And me and Mr. Miller, we've been on the trash route. Now, that's another experience y'all need to go on. It's hot. That's, that's when you need to go right now. I mean, really. You know, that way you get the really experience of how hard-working city workers work. Because that's a rough job. So those are some of the things that I've done. And that's all I was going to say last week when I was rudely, and I say rudely, wouldn't even give me a first or a second to even speak as a city councilman. That's all I was going to tell y'all. I wasn't going to tell you about the water department because I hadn't done it. But I was going to tell you about these conferences of mayors. But you know as councilmen up here, we have to respect each other and look out for each other. This is a divided council. It really is. Just like they're always talking about the United States is divided for its race. We're divided up here on this council very badly. I know when it comes to me. So uh, I hope you enjoyed my report. And like I said, I try to meet all the people I can because you never know when you're going up that road again when you're going to meet them again. I was surprised to see these guys again. I was glad to see them. So I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you. Thank you again, even though I signed up to let me speak. Thank you, Mr. Van. Mr. Mayor. I just want to uh, ask what would be the procedure on uh, item number 17. I need to have my vote recorded as an abstain rather than a yes vote. I wasn't paying attention. Okay. We'll note that in the record. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Reed. Item number 25. Consider an executive session to discuss and take possible action on the following. A, pursuant to Section 307C11, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session for the purpose of conferring on matters pertaining to economic development within the southeast quadrant of the city, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. B, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss negotiations with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Local Number 2465, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. C, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss negotiations with the International Association of Firefighters, Local Number 57, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. D, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss negotiations with the Fraternal Order of Police, Lodge Number 95, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. 
E, pursuant to Section 307B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening in, in an executive session to discuss a pending tort claim, I'm sorry, a pending claim or action related to the 24th Street Improvement Project, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. Do we have a motion to go into executive session? Move for approval. Second. Further discussion from the council? Roll call. <clears throat> Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. Those who do not need to be in this uh, executive session, we ask that you excuse yourself from the room at this time. We will now reconvene from executive session. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Here. Mr. Tucker. Uh, item 24A, pursuant to Section 307C11, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the Council did convene an executive session to discuss matters uh, pertaining to economic development within the southeast quadrant of the city. After being briefed on the status of that uh, potential um, business, I think an appropriate motion would be to move approval to authorize the city manager to negotiate and execute a development agreement with the developer under the terms, conditions, and parameters discussed in executive session. Do we have a motion on item eight? Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Abstain. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Mr. Tucker, item B. Uh, item uh, 25B. Uh, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the City Council did convene an executive session to discuss ongoing negotiations with the American Federation of State, County, Municipal Employees, Local Number 24. Uh, 65. Uh, after being briefed on the status of those neg ongoing negotiations, no action is necessary at this time. Item 24, excuse me, 25C, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the Council convened an executive session to discuss negotiations with the International Association of Firefighters, Local Number 57. After being briefed on the status of those ongoing negotiations, uh, no action is necessary at this time. Item 25D. Pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the Council convened an executive session <coughs> excuse me, to discuss ongoing negotiations with the Fraternal Order of Police, Lodge Number 95. After being briefed on the status of those ongoing negotiations, no action is necessary at this time. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. Uh, sorry. No, I was going to say item E. Thank you. Uh, item E, pursuant to Section 307, uh, B4, uh, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, uh, the City Council did convene an executive session to discuss a potential claim or action related to the 24th Street Improvement Project. After being briefed on the status of that potential claim or action uh, related to the uh, 24th Street contractor, um, I believe staff has been given direction on moving forward and further by call of the Council. Uh, excuse me, by call of the mayor, this item will be placed back on the next council meeting of June 28th, 2021, for further consideration and possible action at that time. Uh, mayor? Thank you, Mr. Tucker. That was the last item that we have for tonight. We are adjourned. Oh, sorry. Well, we are adjourned. <laughs> We will now call to order the Muskogee Municipal Authority for June 14, 2021. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Here. Item number one. Consider approval of MMA minutes of May 10th, 2021, or take other necessary action. Do we have any corrections to the minutes or Move motions for, approved? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number two. Consider approval of MMA claims for the month ending <clears throat> May 31, 2021, or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. 
Yes, you have before you the claims. I would draw attention to uh, on uh, the page where it says retain for capital projects. Uh, this is that uh, the money that goes into that fund that I was talking to you about, about the $2.6 million for capital projects. Uh, that's part of the MMA overall budget. Um, and so this is kind of a demonstration about how that money comes in every month and goes to that, to that budget. Um, staff does recommend approval. I'll be happy to, happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions for Mr. Miller or a motion to approve the claim? Move for approval. Second. Uh, motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Abstain. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Mm -hmm. Item number three. Consider approval of resolution number 2865, adopting the Muskogee Municipal Authority budget for fiscal year 2021-2022, establishing budget amendment authority, or take other necessary actions. Mr. Miller. Yes, this is uh, similar to what we talked about. Uh, I covered the MMA budget when we went through the original budget book uh, during the city council meeting. Um, the numbers specific to MMA are highlighted here, but they're the same as are in your budget, budget, uh, budget book. And I will slow down uh, and be happy to answer any questions, but staff does recommend approval. Do we have any questions for Mr. Miller? Move for approval. Second. second. It's been moved and second. Any other discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? <coughs> yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. <laughs> the item passes. We are now adjourned from that meeting. We will now have the special call agenda of the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority for June 14, 2021. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Here. Ivory Van? Here. Jamie Stout? Here. Evelyn Hibbs? Here. Alex Reynolds? Here. Stephanie Morgan? Here. Tracy McGee? Here. Tracy Hoos? Here. Item number one. Consider approval of Muskogee Redevelopment Authority minutes of January 25th, 2021, or take other necessary action. Do we have any corrections <coughs> to the minutes or a motion to approve? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second on the minutes. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item number two. Consider approval of resolution number 2867, adopting the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority budget for fiscal year 2021-2022, establishing budget amendment authority, or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Yes, similarly to the uh, MMA, this is a budget that we highlighted as we went through the big budget book earlier. Um, this is specific to the MRA, and uh, the details are before you. We'd be happy to answer any questions, and staff does recommend approval. Do we have any discussion or questions from Mr. Miller? Or move, a motion? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? <coughs> yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. That will conclude that meeting. We'll now call to order the special call meeting for the Muskogee Public Muskogee Parking Authority for June 14, 2021. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Here. Item number one. Consider approval of Muskogee Parking Authority special call minutes of September 14, 2020, or take other necessary action. Do we have any questions on the minutes or a motion to approve? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the minutes? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item number two. Consider approval of resolution number 2866, adopting the Muskogee Parking Authority budget for fiscal year 2021, 2022, establishing budget amendment authority or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Yes, uh, and likewise uh, to the other items, this is the budget that was in the budget book. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions and we do recommend approval. Do we have any discussion for Mr. Miller or a motion to approve? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? 
Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. That will conclude uh, the Muskogee Parking Authority meeting and all of our meetings for tonight. We are adjourned.